This is a something from a domestic source. It's probably via eBay. Oh, it's a uh, variable area flow meter. So this is apparently used. It's got quarter inch quick uh, disconnects on it. And it's calibrated from zero to 20 standard cubic feet an hour. It's secured to the panel with these two nuts. I thought I'd do a video uh, of this device here. This device is a uh, trademarked as a rotometer, although the trademark does not uh, belong to Dwyer. The trademark itself belongs to a European company, but the industry seems to have settled on rotometer. It falls into a class of variable area flow meters. Um, these meters are suitable for fluids. They consist of some sort of uh, clear plastic or glass with a tapered hole. It's hard to see that it's tapered, but it's smaller down here than it is up here. From the bottom to the top, it increases in width actually in diameter. The hole is made to this plugged, now plugged opening by either a reamer or it's formed around a mandrel. This particular flow meter is made by Dwyer. It's one of the uh, less costly ones and it measures air. And it's marked clearly standard cubic feet of air. So we know what a cubic feet is. We breathe air. Standard is a sets the uh, temperature and pressure, which in English terms is 70 degrees Fahrenheit or air pressure. In the tapered bore is some sort of a little pellet. It, I believe it to be round and flow is introduced to the bottom of the bore and exits the top of the bore. Here it enters and exits at right angle but some uh, flow meters are straight through. This particular one has a valve at the bottom so this is a rate setting meter. It not only measures the rate of flow of air, but it allows me to set the rate. There are a lot of meters without rate setting valves, they're just indicators. This thing I think has an accuracy of 1% and then includes your ability to read it. Standard cubic feet of air, zero, well, zero is clear down wherever the ball disappears to. Clear down there is zero to a maximum of two standard cubic foot of air. Here's another one very similar with a King instrument label on it. It's also standard cubic feet per hour of air at standard temperature and pressure and it, it instructs you to read to the center of the float. Come on, there we go. So, these are intended to be mounted vertically and more or less plumb in all directions. You can see, comparison to the diameter of the float, it, it's just this bore is just a little bit bigger than the float here, but here it's half again as big as the float.
that's true here as well. There's just a tiny bit of taper. Again, this King Instruments one has a rate setting valve and flow enters at the bottom, exits at the top, and we have the remnants of the hole that the mandrel or ring rule is installed in. I'm not sure if these weren't actually both manufactured by the same company. The scale length is about two inches. Two and a half inches. Now these are also used for uh, chlorine gas, which is typically calibrated in pounds per day. Uh, sulfur dioxide can be in cubic feet per hour, cubic feet per minute, or pounds per day. Uh, welding gas, especially shielding gas, on a TIG or a MIG welder, and there it'll be calibrating cubic foot per minute, or perhaps just a s arbitrary scale, and the welder learns where to set it. This is a Fisher and Porter F and P unit. It's much higher quality. It actually has a model number and a serial number. It has one half inch pipe connections at the top and bottom. Here we can see pretty clearly a glass tube and has an obvious taper to it. Enclosed in uh, stainless steel and cast iron housing with glass. The tube has a serial number that matches the serial number on the unit. Uh, A10 the tube is marked A10 spherical ball. You read the top of the ball in this one uh, that's zero on the scale the bottom is it clear at the ball? The ball is clear at the bottom right now. Uh, we're looking at pounds per minute. Interesting concept: pounds per minute of air at 1.5 psi. So it's not standard conditions. 1.5 psi. G, which is gauge, at 70 Fahrenheit. So although the temperature is standard, the pressure is one and a half pounds. The scale goes up to 0 0.07. Let's see it. Zero one, zero two, and you can see the diameter obviously increasing. Get the ball unstuck. There we go. You can see the diameter compared to the ball considerably larger at the top than at the bottom. The scale length on this flow meter is probably five inches, five and a half inches. This is a considerably larger Fisher importer. Has a scale length of probably ten inches. Um, the float, if you call it a float, the indicator is actually tubular and it's uh, stainless steel. I'll get a close-up of it here. Let's see the uh, float has some flanges on it and you read it at the top flange. This is also a Fisher and Porter unit. It's calibrated in gallons per minute uh, of a liquid with specific gravity of 1.05 and a viscosity of 1.8 centipoise. So it's a very specific um, 
set of measuring conditions. Again, the tube is serialized. Uh, we have half inch end connections and it's marked uh, Fisher and Porter Company Precision Bore Flow Rater. Flow Rater was a, a term specific to Fisher and Porter. And it gives a tube characteristics. This unit's very heavy. Uh, cast iron ends. Stainless steel and I believe this to be plastic. This is Wallace and Tiernan unit. You can see Wallace and Tiernan in there. It's got a glass tube. It's got a plastic shield. The tube itself is not graduated. The plastic scale is calibrated in percent, which is a worthless number. And a warning says install shield before using. And then instructions as to the fact that it's a uh, the tube is an NP42. I'll get that closer. The tube is an NP42, whatever that means. A 1 8 float and a scale, which means nothing to me. Scale's not part of the tube, it's not etched. So I can't believe this is this quality of a meter since the scale is not actually on the glass tube and it reads percent of flow. Now I think the tube is, it, is removable by this thumb uh, screw, thumb wheel and come on there we go. There's the ball and what's interesting Although Wallace and Tiernan reads correctly here, the scale does not. It needs to be rotated. And that puts the rate setting valve at the top. I have another one of these that I've never touched. This meter is actually in a sealed Wallace and Tiernan box and they call it a purge meter. So I've taken it out of the box. You can see Wallace and Chernin is reads this way, but the device needs to be mounted this way so that the tube enlarges towards the top. I'm not certain whether this tube can be rotated. That's a possibility. Put the rate setting valve at the bottom. After all, we do have a thumb wheel here. And the scale certainly could be reversed. But a scale calibrated percent of flow is stupid. I've removed the shield. I have it here. If you want to know what you're measuring, you need to get behind the flow meter to find out that you're measuring full scale, 100%, 2.5 SCFH of a gas with a specific gravity of 1 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 0 PSIG? I don't know about that. Both meters are identical. Putting this on the back of the gauge is ridiculous. Invariably, these are mounted on a panel or in a maze of piping. I do have a Brooks, a cute little fellow, but I can't seem to find it for this video. I also have a couple of much larger ones. Uh, 
reading in tens of gallons per minute, I think they have a three foot scale. But they're too big to get on camera and they're too heavy for me to carry around. So, But here we go. A series of variable area flow meters. No electricity required. Just gravity. <laughs> 